Cheers, guys. Epics 911. Welcome to the Saturday, June 3rd, 2017 edition of VR News. You know, guys, when virtual reality, you know, game or experience developers are coming up with a name for their title, it usually takes one of four shapes. The first is it's simply a name. It can be original, it can be fantastic, it could be mediocre, but at the end of the day, it's just a name. The second, feeling the need to tack VR onto the name of the game. It could be something like World Championship Downhill Ski Jumping VR, uh, etc. The third, trying to make some kind of play on virtual reality, and we see this so much and probably tied my least favorite with number four, which this one we're going to talk about is a perfect example of. And that is just being so incredibly cheesy with the name that you got to kind of just groan. What's the name of this app? Appy Pie. Wow. <laughs> yeah. All right, a few seconds have passed. Let's try that again. And in our first story, we're going to talk about the app called Appy Pie. Yeah, it doesn't sound any better at all. We're just going to leave it at that. We're going to leave it at that. Let's talk about what the hell it actually does. So Appy Pie, according to CEO Abhinav Girdar, and we'll let him explain in his own words. The main issue is that incorporating technology such as AR and VR is costly which is why I wanted it to feature in a do-it-yourself application platform and allow users to have the same capabilities as bigger companies so they can leverage the competitive playing field. So, yeah, I get that, and I like the idea behind this. So, essentially what they're trying to do is allow brick-and-mortar companies, companies that don't have a hell of a lot of technology or understanding of technology, allow them to market themselves using the latest technology. So 360 degree videos, static screenshots, etc. That's what this software is geared towards, not building your own game or full blown experience. And to be fair, they don't mention any of that. Uh, to the contrary, they're pretty upfront about what they do and what they're capable of. It's just that name, just that name. But I digress. Up next, Intel inks a three-year deal with Major League Baseball. And this is going to uh, allow them to basically stream live and on-demand Major League Baseball content. Uh, Intel is using their True VR app to launch this. So you would get that, pay the fee. And starting uh, June, June 6th is the specific date to be able to watch those. And the initial, I think, is going to be uh, free. It sounds in the article like the entire run is free. Not gonna say that just in case that isn't true, but it's certainly starting off free. And according to a statement, and this is from Intel Sports Group's James Caruana. Here's what he had to say about it. Uh, as a VR partner of Major League Baseball, Intel is delivering a truly immersive VR live stream where fans can experience the excitement of being at the ballpark every week. The addition of live stats to the Intel True VR weekly games is another example of how we are giving fans more control to personalize their baseball experience. So again, like the idea, uh, as with other sports, uh, the one that I'd really like to see it with for obvious reasons is hockey, um, you know, English Premier League, I would love to see that as well. Uh, we've already heard about this with basketball, football, so it's nice to see Major League Baseball jump on board. All right. Next news story, string theory's weirdest ideas finally make sense thanks to VR. And that was the title of the article. This one is from Wired.com. And I'm going to stray from that a little bit and say, yeah, no, it's still no less freaking confusing. But the illustrations just 
serve as a nice visual indicator of your confusion, right? And I'm not sure that's what they were going for because yeah, it doesn't suddenly just make all the pieces fall into place. But I love the approach, I love the idea. And uh, the company that's behind this, their name is Abelana VR Productions. They've created this. And the article is about uh, Brian Green, who's a physicist at Columbia University, going through string theory with a class, with participants essentially from all over the world. In the experience, they're wearing their name and a flag representing the country that they're from. What I like about this, and it was kind of tongue-in-cheek, but still true, simply in layman's terms, the idea behind string theory is that there are six additional dimensions, and a few of those so small, we can't see them. Uh, they are wrapped up in other matter, and like I said, we don't need to go into the super details of this, but the idea with VR is that they can instantly scale to that size. So being able to see an ant suddenly walk on one of these dimensions, uh, because it's as wide as a freeway to him, serves just as an illustration of the concept. And in that sense, yeah, it does make it make a bit more sense. And like I said, it was mostly tongue in cheek. I get that, I get the idea behind it. Uh, but really, so much more we're gonna be able to do with VR, but this is a nice, inroad anyways into physics and certainly string theory. Next news story, virtual reality headsets even less popular than wearable devices. Now, I talked about that IDC survey and the results of that yesterday. I'm going to put up a little graph. We actually have the graph of that survey. This is from the register.co UK, a UK paper, and Obviously, up front, I've got a huge innate bias towards VR and wanting to be successful, but that's pretty obvious to most of you, right? Um, but let's look at the stats because there's a couple of things I don't really agree with in terms of where the article, where the paper went with this. And the first one is them saying the market's growing fast, but only the cheap stuff with no strings attached is selling. But is that accurate? Well, let's look at the numbers, right? So we can see here clearly what we talked about yesterday, Samsung in first, 489,500, representing 21.5%. Well, let's add up Sony, HTC, and Facebook as the wired solutions. And what do we come up with? We come up with just over 30%, which is basically another way of saying one in three VR solutions purchased is a wired, full-fledged, full-power system. That's not too bad. It's normal. What's cheaper is probably going to sell more. But to say one in three is a bad number for wired, I don't agree. I think that that's a pretty healthy number. Are the numbers low overall compared to what I would like to see? Hell yeah. But it's not bad in terms of the wired solutions, what they're pushing. And then the other thing that they basically said is, you know, that the VR headsets themselves are less popular than other wearable, but they provide absolutely no data for that. And can they really make that statement? You can have something be just as popular, but maybe somebody can't afford it. That doesn't mean it's not popular. It's popular. It's just cost prohibitive. So... I know some of that is kind of semantics, but the first point, yeah, that is definitely one to take exception to because, like I said, I'll say it again, one in three, not bad. All right, guys, hopefully you guys uh, have a weekend that is starting out A-OK. -okay. Mine certainly is. Off to get that gaming video finished and uh, enjoy the halftime break of my weekend. Guys, as always, cheers.